So there are a number of factors that affect the, uh, the price movement. Um, in general, these are broken down into fundamentals and then you've got your, your technical. So you can either do some fundamental analysis or technical analysis. Fundamentals is looking at the uh, economics of the country or, or the, the two countries that you're looking at because you're trading one currency again, against the other. And there are major steerers in, um, as indications of how uh, a country's economy is doing. As, so, for example, interest rate, uh, gross domestic uh, product. So the main fundamental steerer in the FX markets are central banks of each country. Every country has a central bank. And that central bank is trying to do everything they can to maintain a stable economy. That's how they describe their, their purpose. Um, they're also trying to grow the economy. You know, every country wants their economy to grow. So the central bank have certain powers to, um, to help the economy when it's needed. The first power they have is to control interest rates. So when an economy um, is doing well and growth is, uh, is very high, a bank will, you'll see a bank put up interest rates. And this is to try to control spending because if interest rates are higher, it means that people are going to borrow less so they won't spend as much because you don't want an economy to grow too fast because it creates a bubble and instability and potential problems for, for that country. So that's when you'll see interest rates go up, when, when, generally when an economy is growing and uh, a central bank want to, want, want to create more stability. But when um, an economy is shrinking, which is what we've been experiencing you know, since, since 2008, um, certainly in the, in the UK, in the US, and you know, definitely in, in Europe, you will see that interest rates come down. And they come down because the bank want people to spend more. They want money to continue circulating. And if interest rates are low, more people are likely to borrow, to take credit. And this creates, it's, it's, it's kind of inject, trying to inject the economy um, for money to start moving around again. Because if money is moving, then um, it, it, the theory is that it helps the economy. Obviously, the government is making more money when money is moving around as well. So that's why we've seen incredibly low interest rates um, in, in these major countries for, for the last few years. But sometimes just making an interest rate low isn't good enough isn't enough. You know, if the economy is in a really bad state, a low interest rate for a couple of years isn't enough. And that's where quantitative easing comes in. So this is like the, the next step, the final straw for what else can a central bank do. And so we see, we've seen a lot of this action going on for a few years now. And it literally means printing money or pumping money into the system to inject it with cash and to get the economy going again. Um, there's arguments uh, you know, for and against whether it's good for an economy or bad for an economy. Obviously, if you're printing more cash, it means that any savings you have, the value of the, that money is going to fall. But then on the other hand, if it can get the economy going, you know, if it can, if it can boost the economy again, then, then it could be a good thing. So there's lots of economic theory around uh, quantitative easing. Um, but what else is interesting about central banks is you may have heard of the term called currency wars. Now this is um, where a central bank is looking to devalue their currency to attract more investment into their country or, or exports, for example. And China is famous for this. They, on purpose, keep their currency value low because their economy relies on exports heavily. But also in the US, we've seen this, we've seen in the past the, U the US on purpose, the federal bank saying something about the economy that may be bad or they're not going to put up interest rates. And they know that those comments will spark the US dollar to weaken, which will help their economy. So you have to, when you're trading in the currency market, I, I think you know, some people do just solely look at the charts and that's it. And it's a very sort of black and white clear way to trade um, and it works for, for some people and it, it's effective, you can, if, especially if you're a numbers person. Um, and you know, we can talk about the psychological reasons behind charting as well maybe later on. But if you're going to be looking at the fundamentals, the fundamentals are the main drivers behind where, you know, where a currency price is going. Um, 
And if, so if you are going to be looking at the fundamentals, you need to have a good understanding of the policy of that central bank at that point in time. You know, are they going to put up interest rates? What are they saying about their economy? You need to get a good feeling for it because what they say dictates where their currency goes. Do you think that governments can actually afford higher interest rates now at the moment with the amount of deficit there is? I mean, are we going to, you know, how is that going to, how is that going to change? How is that going to advantage mm. a forex trader? Yeah. So the central bank is really meant to operate separate from the government, but obviously they are, they are involved. Um, and the central bank will s state that they're just trying to create stability. But we can't ignore the fact that a low interest rate helps the government when there's, when there's lots of debt to be paid. So of course it's helping them, and I'm sure it's, uh, you know, it's a consideration when, when interest rates are to, to go up.